I'm still looking for enough Tarkia flowers. So this is definitely one of the things you want to mark. If you don't care enough about marking, say, these buildings, which is Sawmill Regiment 3. Sawmill Regiment 3. You definitely, definitely want to mark this. Jade Chest. And then come pick it up every month or however long it takes to respawn. Bam! Three Jade right there. Does not sound like a lot, but trust me, you need to do this if you want. If you want good soldiers, you need to have some sort of income of Jade. So this is Haunted Mines, Regiment 10. Haunted Mines, Regiment 10. You kind of see that my map is... My map is really blank here, but it's kind of fleshed out on this side. So as, as you explore the game, I would go ahead and just start filling in these gaps. Like, here's another thing. I might be able to find wood in this deserted sawmill, Regiment 5. Sawmill. Regiment 5. Now we're not going to do this together throughout the whole game, but since I'm since this is a walkthrough, I would be doing it for the first part of the game. Now the difference between this and my other playthroughs is I've actually played this before. I don't normally play games before I talk, before I record them, because I think I have very little to say often, and that doesn't make for a very good let's play. So, but in this case, I have played this, and 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 I think that this is a pretty interesting game. I really like the mountain blade parts of it. I don't like the combat parts though. Alright, so this is another outpost. We'll go ahead and get more Thurians while we're here. Alright. And since this is Myrton, I can actually buy more stuff. And since I have more gold, I can... I, I, well, there's, he has nothing interesting. I can buy resources, this wood and ironstone. I can also buy food if I wanted to. Especially chicken does not count towards food. And, and we do need some food. So we'll go ahead and just pick up that one right there and we'll be good. Alright, so this is the reason why we're over here. We are going to get past this Tundra Dragon and take at least the Jade Chest. Taking the Prestige Shard requires some time, so the Tundra Dragon might be wise to our tricks by then. <laughs> oh, and I should definitely mark that as Jade Chest. Now I have five jade. That's not a lot, but it, it, it is enough to keep me going for a while because it doesn't take much of jade to upgrade my Thurians, at least in the beginning. Okay, let's see what else we got. We, sh we can head to Myrton and just take a look at the store there. So these mysterious witches allow you to do dungeons if you own the city. We don't own any cities. So here are three characters that we may want to think about, and then here's a waitress for the city. Um, let's go ahead and first take a look at the merchant. And we have actually just a little bit more money now. We can go ahead and fill up on more of these. So you can see here that I spent four gold on these chicken, and I can still buy more chicken for the same amount of money. You do want basic forge tools in the game, but we don't need any right now. I will go ahead and mark this on my map as a place I can buy basic forge tools though. So I'll put down repair. For now, though, let's go ahead and get some extra chicken. I'll say 83. Sounds pretty good. Actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and buy all buy an entire stack because these stacks don't merge since these were purchased from different areas. This is Myrton East Outpost Specialty Chicken purchases the four units. This is Myrton Specialty Chicken purchases the four units. All right, so I'll go ahead and sell the, these non tea flowers for 53 Utar. That's actually pretty good. I need one of these. I need I need all of these. I don't need this as far as I can remember, at least not right now. For that, get rid of these gust scrolls, get rid of this mana water, get rid of this healing water, and we're good. Alright, uh, so this is the- I'm gonna lose a total of 269 gold by doing so, so I still have some money left over. But I will go ahead, as I said, put on my map, just a business. Put on my map. Oh, I, I right-clicked, but I guess it's right-click on the name. Put Forge Tools, right here. So this is, I've now marked this as a place I can buy forge tools if I need it. It's easy for me to remember Redstone Keep, right here in the newbie area of the game that has tools, but it's hard for me to remember where other places have, have them. I'm going to make a save now and keep going. 
Now, we said that there we needed to go to N Naguka East Outpost, so... And then we'll be on our way out of this area with nearly a full squad of Thurians. A week has passed and I get my 100 Uttar. Alright, so now this place is, uh, has 17 prestige with me. Not very fantastic, but at least I get some experience, which is important. Alright, this is a wildfire click, and my group is actually stronger than them. They're, you notice they are not bright red, so that means that, that they would not chase me down. Well, ready to hand over some Utar? No, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you. So once you're strong enough, I recommend attacking those bandit groups as often as possible until they start running away from you. And then once they start running away from you, go ahead and let them go so you can start raising your relationship. As you defeat the bandits, they actually get more powerful, so you can consider them sources of future experience points. But we're gonna go ahead and hold down control and just let the battle play itself. Now these look just like the spirit potions. Really pills from earlier, but this is not quite as exciting, so we'll just pawn that off. But our Thurians have now leveled up. And we'll continue to do this. We do need to find some heroes, though. This is a Haunted Mine Regiment 10. Do we already have that? No, we don't. We'll go ahead and mark that. Haunted Mine. Regiment 10. So let's go and hold control for speeding up the game and just mash Q. Just pointing in the general direction of the bad guys. Maybe I won't hit anybody, but again, I'm just trying to get through. Here we go. We've got level ups, let's take a look. We can either get a promotion to our sidestep, or we can increase our agility. Now, well, I'm going to go ahead and increase our strength because I'd like to build towards these next skills. Skills, I believe, are the most important thing. But we don't actually have, we have not unlocked shades yet. So we have a choice between spirit upgrade, enhanced arcana, or enhanced stamina. We're just going to get this one to get increased magic attack. Did we label? No, we are not labeled that one. Let's take a look. This is a bandit camp level 9, and I almost hit continue by accident. <laughs> Bandits. Bandit camp. Regiment 9. So now, now they will run away from me as long as they're that same size that, that we were fighting earlier. It's good, because now I can start building up relationship points with them as long as they're that size. And once they get to a bigger size, well that just means more experience for me. So it still pans out. This is party 4, or party level 8. Burial ground, party 8. Kind of nice, nicely fleshing things out for me. Here's some more stuff here. Those are magic dens or something. Run faster. And it's Regiment 9.
Okay, now we have reached Redstone Valley, which is where most people probably begin the game from. This is a siege mission right there. We are not going to start that off right away. So this is Redstone. You'll probably get used to it. We will take one group of Nasirs so that we can have some clerics. Yes, join us, please. We'll see if he has an easy quest for us. We're not going to save load this one. He wants us to ship supplies to Cotta Town. Absolutely, we we want we want to head that direction anyways. We actually have enough money to to get a permanent trade permit. Let's go ahead and do that this time. And we can get actually one gold each from that, which is not a very large uh, return on our investment. But if we happen to do quests in the area, we might we might be able to come back and buy some things. This is a m merchant's hut for, for recruiting animals, but there's something really annoying about recruiting people or rescuing them from prison. If we were to hire this Badland Wolf Cub, it would be a fragment of a full troop. Let me explain how that works. All right, this is a branch file to showcase what it's like to try to level up squads that you hire their incomplete. So this is a two out of two out of two Python hatchling group. The most that they can actually be is four out of four. You do get two advantages, and one is if you completely deplete them, which shouldn't happen, it will cost you half as much or whatever proportion as much to restore them. It also costs you half as much to promote them. So you see, it's sixty at sixty here. So we're going to promote them, and I'll show that in a little bit here. We're going to promote them to Python. Now, if I wanted to upgrade them to Giant Python, it needs to be combined into four troops. So I cannot actually, I cannot actually evolve them. What we need to do is we need to combine these two. However, I've already evolved this one, so I cannot actually combine this with the other group because they are not the same squad. One's a Python hatchling, and one's a Python. We gotta, we gotta now upgrade this group as well. Which means, by the way, I'm sharing experience between two different squads. Experience is shared by squad and not by unit count. So this is shared by four, it, it, or experience is shared between four different individuals here. Unless they're maxed out, then they don't get a share at all. So in this case, it'll be shared between these two. If they're one group, like right now, I'm going to go and combine them. Then, then instead of getting 50 each, they would get 100%. We're going to combine them. And whenever you combine units, they, they average out their experience. Fine, and now I can promote them to Giant Python. You can see here also that it's 120, 120 instead of 60, 60 as it was before. It's just really obnoxious to try to level up units. Oh, and by the way, for some some units, when you get to the higher levels of them, they, they actually decrease in squad quantity or unit quantity. In this case, you need four of them in order to turn it into one Giant Python. I guess we just sort of push them all together like a piece of clay. Well, regardless, to get a Giant Python, I, I would need to randomly roll this place twice to get the same unit. So right now I, I went in, it's Arctic Wolf Cub. So I could buy it and you only get one choice maybe about per week. If you save and load before you walk in, then you're fine. But if you if you walk in, it says Arctic Wolf Cub, then the next time you walk in, it's Arctic Wolf Cub. So you need to save before you do it. Kind of like when you're getting a quest from somebody. But yeah, this is one of the reasons why I don't wish to deal with the with with recruiting or rescuing units because then I have to have partial groups of squads and it has to be the exact same partial group because there's also cobras and vipers there's arctic wolf cubs and badland wolf cubs so it's 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 obnoxious to try to get enough of them the exact same kind and then and then and then promote them to a higher level it's just easier to get villagers all right now with that out of the way we'll go back to our live recording Now there is a mod for that. Uh, the, this game features support for for Steam Workshop, and there's a mod that allows you not to have to worry about that. This I would, I would visit this guy pretty regularly if you, if you can. He always requires Jade for everything he purchases, but this is a good way to use extra skill points that you might have, which you're not really going to, but if if you wanted uh, to get more skills, and you can use them on anybody. So this Frost Arrow would be physical attack, and I could use it on my Spirit Mancer. I'm gonna go ahead and say no for now. But I do like getting more skills. Just bear in mind that you need a free skill point in order to read a skill book. So this is not free skill for you. I cannot actually read this skill right now because I have no free skill points. But that would take away a skill point from one of these others. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that without 
um, without using mods or without using legacy points, my character limit is level 20, which means that I can only get 20 skill points throughout the game, not counting skill point items. I've got all of these skill points to purchase or skills to purchase through, through that. I've got to be very careful about what I pick. This is a wandering painter. We'll go ahead and do this quest for now, just because we'll run into him over time. Traveler, are you confused about the nature of the world? So this is this guy's another exposition dump. I've painted some interesting tales. If you want to hear a story, why don't you look at my paintings? Look at his paintings. I will tell you the tale of three dynasties. The wanderer painter clears his throat, unravels a scroll, and speaks. A long, long time ago, there was a distant land abundant with natural beauty. We will call this place the Land of Strife. Why would we call it that? Because it was a place of constant fighting, where desire for competition swells. Thank you, I wouldn't have known without that. Which brings us to the first dynasty, the Goddess Dynasty. The arrival of this dynasty meant an end to the chaos of the previous ages. The Goddess Dynasty ended the struggle between the people of fire and the people of water, when the people of fire peoples were driven from the Land of Strife. Oh, I forgot to mention, the people of fires and water were the original natives of those Land of Strife, as fire and water incompatible fighting between the two of us. Ah! All right. So we're actually going to just go ahead and skip through all this because I don't believe it has a particular relevance. Now, I will say that having finished the quest, I still don't completely grasp what happened in the game. And maybe it's because this stuff right here, I just sort of glazed past and I'm going to do so again. I don't normally do so for playthroughs, but I don't think it's going to be very useful for a walkthrough to, to subject you to this. All right, we'll leave it on long enough for you to pause it if you were interested in reading it. Hey, wake up. Well, that's the story. That was the tale of the three dynasties. Each of the three dynasties eventually perished or split. But the fighting will never stop in the land of strife. I will continue this story when the fourth dynasty is established. Thank you for listening to my story. I am leaving to prepare the next tale. Oh, right. These paintings were all made by my little daughter. Isn't that nice? You feel like you have benefited from listening to this tale. Then we'll go and give our hero the experience. Alright, since we have a trading permit with redstone keep ready, I can actually buy equipment from this place. Some of the equipment requires levels, like this one requires level 3 to use, but some of them are level 1 right here. So if you, you this, this the check uses level 1 swords, so we can actually buy this frostbite iron sword if we want it, it's a low low price of 75. However, we actually need every penny we can get to, to do trades, so we're not actually going to do that at the moment. We will, however, go and sell off this chicken at the moment. But it's not a very great deal, but I think the good price of chicken is like 8 at the, if I go to the end of the map. So this this is fine. We want to drop that off and pick up something new. Let's go ahead and pick up this. Now I could buy this out, but you got to remember that the, the game does not stack things well. So let's go ahead and buy these. And then we'll buy, let's say, 13 of these. I don't have enough money, but, oh, but you'll see that that uh, it doesn't stack. So here, just take those 13 back, take these two back. Now I've got 100, 804. We'll go ahead and so that basically means I can buy roughly 800 because I do want 100 for tr for trading permits. So we'll say nine of these. There we go. So I'll make 30 profit off that. In the very beginning, that'll be very slow, but after about two passes, you will have enough money to basically last you through the game. So the first pass is going to be very much of a struggle. The second pass is pretty much solidifying your advantage. Then you're good. So I just need to merchant my way around the map twice. So this is another leader. He is a beast to fight. I I, I don't have a real good strategy for fighting him. <laughs> He's just don't let him near you. He'll slaughter you. At least in the quest battle. Maybe in a normal battle, he's a pushover. I don't know. All right, let's see if this place has any interesting... Nope, no no quest to do. So I'll make a save. And let's go ahead and go talk to this dude. I think he wants 500 gold. Unfortunately, we don't have any gold left. But this guy would be good for getting an extra spell. Many come to me seeking to learn the basics of fire magic. Pay me, pay up 500 Utar, and I'll pass on the basics of fire magic to you. Nope, don't have enough. So, what we will do, though, is we'll go and mark that on their map. Fire Trainer 1. I think his name was something Fire Arcana Training, so I'll change that in the, on the next load. We do have transfer goods to Kata Town. But now they're in now, now they're in Redstone Valley. This is this is where you were supposed to arrive at. Kata Town is actually not in this region. This that can be very confusing for players. Kata Town is actually in the region over, and one of the reasons it's really good for for us to go to is that is a fantastic place to trade. 
we're we have some food. Let's go and fight these guys. We might be able to get more food out of them. And if we're not, we can hit that den nearby. So those are our Nasirs, so we're gonna eventually train them to be clerics. Right now I'm trying to get to level 3 because we're gonna pass by a, uh, another recruit and we want another squad slot for him. Mantis reached level 3. Let's take a look at my skills. This this is a really good one. Definitely take that skill at level 3. So basically what that allows me to do is turn my psychic bullet into a shotgun. I now have another slot. Let's go ahead and move on. I don't need more food. I got plenty. This, I think, are farmers. Not really worth your time. You can raise them into mercenaries. Bandit Desert Brotherhood. Well, this is what it looks like. Like that, right there. So basically it triples your, your damage power. Um, well, I mean it doesn't hit the same guy unless you're like right up to his face. Alright, we got a new piece of armor out of that. Let's go and take a look. This would raise my physical defense by 10 and my max health by 25, so let's go and put that on. Now in this direction, there's really, there's really not a whole lot we can do. Except I do want to show off this stable right here. As as the game progresses, you will eventually have enough money. I, do, I don't, but you'll eventually have enough money to buy mounts to make your party go faster. More monsters here if you want them. So I'm going to fill out that star and get a prestige level. You can see now that I have talent's red dot there where I did not before. Let's go and take a look. We want to still continue to try to make money, so we'll go further down the trader line. And I could get mint if I wanted, but I, I want to maximize my money here. That's probably the way to do it. There's fire arcana training too, but I need arcana one first. Suddenly you hear someone calling you. Now this is an event for the main storyline that happens after you hit level 3. The wariness in the person's voice sounds familiar. You don't remember me? My benefactor, it's me, Malek. The Malek you saved from the Ifrit. You haven't forgotten this troubled scholar. He puts away his old tomes and turns to take your hand. My benefactor, I finally found you. What about Ezra? Scholars always seek their own esoteric path. She finds her own path while others take a different road. Benefactor, I... I'm in desperate need of your help. You must know how powerful the Ifrit are. They've recently begun to attack humans in groups. If rumors are true, the most powerful Ifrit are nearly indistinguishable from humans, except for some superficial differences. They have their own language, intelligence, and powerful magic. They evolve and adapt quickly too. If this continues, humans will be unable to defeat them. The Ifrit are that powerful? Yes, they have established their own base from which they harass passersby. If this continues, they will replace humans as the masters of this land. What do you need me to do? I found a secret base for the Ifrit. They seem to be planning some shameful conspiracy. The Pahoiho Lava Void to the south of Redstone Keep is where I shall wait for you. Only you can prevent forest fires. Malik seems so earnest, there is no use refusing. He staggers awkwardly forward, his belongings slapping against his body with every step. He looks back at you one more time, his eyes heavy with fatigue and sadness. The Ifrit base spoken of by Malik rests within the Pahoi Hoi Lava Void. When you are ready, seek Malik there. Okay, so that's not here. That's in this redstone area around this region here. We're, we'll, 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 we'll get it on the way back. He'll be fine waiting for us. This is where the extra recruits are. So it's some apprentice witches. Utar 200, wood 50, jade 1. Uh, we don't actually have enough wood. So we actually, I, I had forgotten about that. On my second playthrough, I actually uh, did not have enough wood either. So I need to collect some real fast. Here 
here's Kata Town. There's some bandits. We might be able to defeat the bandits. Let's try. So we're going to look for a teal dot on the minimap. I want to look for these bandits before they get too far. <laughs> no idea where these bandits are. There's the Wandering Painter. I hate trying to find these quest targets. It's really obnoxious. There he is. So if I die, which happens here, your cooldown stops and you respawn in a few seconds. Now I see that some of my units have fallen. Uh, they, can get, they can get restored by, by white rose potions, which decay. So these are these are the marks here. See that th these three ends are, are defeated. And if I lose all of them, I have to pay 150 Utar, in addition, I think, to using white rose potion to bring them back. So we want to avoid that. However, when they get promoted to the next class, they will get restored. So we'll be okay without that. Now that we found them, let's go ahead and fight these other groups real quick. There's some wood right there. Oh yeah, we got we got a talent at some point, so let's take a look. Zaynet got some skill point. When upgrade her slice. And if I run any more desert bandits, they are willing to run away from me. And if I let them go, I get relationship points with them. If you get enough relationship points with them, you can actually just hire them outright, which makes it convenient for you. Now that we found them, let's go ahead and get expos get this guy to ramble on at us again. Oh, it's you! We meet again! Crying Rock is my hometown. I lived here before the war, but then, ha, that's not to mention it. You shouldn't be listening to that kind of story. This tomb is the tomb of a little girl. She has been dead for 15 years. I often come to see her and tell her stories. Don't get me wrong, she isn't my wife. She was only seven when she died. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. Do you want to see my daughter's newest work? Today I want to tell you the legend of the Fjord. Wandering painter opens his collections of illustrations and begins to tell the tale. Alright, this one actually does have some relevance to the story, so I will read this out aloud, though it's just still really weird. A long, long time ago, there was a mountain floating high in the sky. The people who lived on this mountain were called the Furud, the people of the stars. They built a city upon that mountain. It was called Al-Thubat, the city of the firmament. You have heard of Al-Thubat and the Furud? That's good. It gives me quite a bit of time. The Furud were natural mages. Each of them possessed magical powers and ability no one else had. Future Sight. As you might guess, Future Sight is the power of prophecy. Simply speaking, the Furid are powerful. If they move their city to the Earth, each of the other tribes, well... So the stronger the power, the more restrictions of that power exist. If Furid leave al Tubad, their power weakens. The Furid cannot use their power on just anyone. The Furid leader knows all prophecies made by his people and uses this knowledge to enforce the three laws of al Tubad. First, thou shalt not predict the end of days, though not many can accomplish such a feat. Second, thou shalt not use thy power for evil. What is evil for the Furid may differ from our sense of morality. Third, thou shalt not predict the future for the inheritor of royal blood. There was a young priestess of the Fjord. She was young and beautiful and more powerful than her peers. Yes, she was beautiful and rebellious, innocent and curious. She traveled to the world below in secret from Althubat during a changing of the guard. As in many stories, she encountered a handsome prince. And like in many stories, our priestess fell in love at first sight. Now is a good time to speak on the matter of royal blood. Bloodline is passed down to five children. Only one will inherit the power of the royal blood, unless the inheritor dies. But most of the time, the power of the royal blood is never passed down to the brothers and sisters of a royal. The prince whom the priestess fell in love with was one of the poor unfortunates who had been abandoned by the royal blood's power. 
My love, will I ever extend the throne? The prince gazed affectionately at his priestess. The power of the blood of the royal family can heal anything, even with a single drop. The blood of the royal family can make a person come to life in the blink of an eye. Of course, this ability can be used on oneself. It is not easy, perhaps impossible, to kill the heir. Love had addled the mind of the priestess, who cheerfully responded, Of course, I'm willing to do anything for you. I know what you're thinking. The Fruid's laws only apply to the one who has inherited royal blood, but this prince had not inherited the blood's power at that time. So if the power of prophecy was applied to him, it would not break the laws of Altubat. That is what the innocent priestess thought as well. She used her future sight to prophecy for three days and three nights. She wrecked her brains until she found an opportunity as small as the eye of a needle. She told a prince of this opportunity and promptly fainted, dreaming of the day she could wear the garb of a queen. She slept, losing track of all time, and awoke. She looked at her hands and saw they were shriveled like a vegetable left out in the desert sun. In a panic, she touched her face, her once smooth skin was as bark. She walked through this unfamiliar place in a state of despair until she realized the truth. She had slept for 30 years. So ends the tale. That's it? Well, that's the end of the story of the priestess. She violated the laws and could never return to Althubat. She could only encounter aging and death on the indifferent surface world. She didn't break the rules. Oh no, the laws of the Fruids forbid seeing into the future of the inheritor of royal blood. The stipulation does not just include the present. For the Fruid, a person encompasses their entire timeline, past, present, and future. The prince became the inheritor of the blood's power, so from the Fruid perspective, using the future side on him was blasphemous. The priestess broke the laws and that was her fate. Thank you for listening to my tale. I think your meeting was fate. My daughter is sick. I must go to care for her. When she recovers, I'll take her to travel and teach her to paint. Perhaps fate will bring us together again. I'll let you benefit from listening to this tale, then we'll give myself more experience. Alright, uh, let's see here. We can now get either spirit upgrade or mana upgrade. We're going to go ahead and get spirit upgrade. Each point of... Sp each spirit point helps us with attack power, so we'll see that increase my magic attack by 2. There's another event over here. I'm going to save because I'm not sure I'm, I'm tough enough to handle this. Now we can give him some wood, but we actually need the wood, so we're going to beat these guys up. There's a fire at Kata Town that is constantly being kept lit by the townspeople. It's your turn today, a town official says to a man in ragged clothing. Please sir, I can't afford coal and oil, and the trees around here are almost all gone. One of the official's guards kicked the man in the stomach before he could finish his sentence. Teach the official and his guards a lesson. Fisher and his guards yell threats at you as they flee with their tails between their legs. The man thanks you profusely, but you see the anguish in his eyes. You both know that he cannot live here anymore. Alright, we still need 23 wood, and I think there was some wood on this cliff side. It's really Mantis! Bad luck today! Brothers, run! Goodbye. This is not the Desert Brotherhood. He, he's a bandit that's guarding this pile, but since I'm too strong, he's gonna let me take everything. I'm basically mugging him. Alright, so I'm at 56 wood now. That's enough. Go ahead and get those witches. That's a holding cell. That's like the monster merchant. I, that's not something I really, really wanna deal with, is trying to combine units. It's not so bad if you had more of those units, but it's random. I could find a python there, and I could find cobra there, I could find a hawk there, I could find a falcon there, I could find an arctic cub there, I could find a woodland cub there. I mean, you cannot combine those different ones together. It's just obnoxious. So, when I do play later, if, if, if this playthrough gets popular enough, um, and I play more of the game, I'm probably going to put in mods, but for the time being, there are not, I'm not going to put any mods in this. Alright, so I still need to make money. 